I think we're going to see an increase in productivity, um, the capability of people to, to do more with the tools, and also this sort of view of AI rather than being this mystical black box as being more of a sparring partner. Hey everyone, I'm JJ Fiasson. I am one of the founders of Leonardo AI and also CEO. And as of last year, we, we joined the Canva family. I've also taken on the role leading the Generative AI Supergroup at Canva. As CEO, I tend to spend most of my time helping define our product roadmap. Well, at Canva, the Generative AI Supergroup has a range of responsibilities and they include product. So we work in a range of product features. Uh, AI research, uh, as well as enabling other supergroups within Canva to integrate AI features. Leonardo's journey began back in 2022. At the time, I had co-founded a gaming studio and we were looking at ways of accelerating development. I've always been very interested in the intersection between technology and creativity and I went down the generative AI rabbit hole. There'd been some developments around image generation, but the models at the time were, were very early. You could, however, use a text prompt and generate an image. It would take something like 20 minutes to give you something back. And they didn't look amazing, but it was sort of really fascinating. And I, and I sort of continued to explore that space around mid 2022. Models started to come out that were much, much faster at image generation. This suddenly opened the doors in terms of capability for asset creation at, at speed and at scale. I spoke to, to my co-founder of the, the Game Studio, who is now a co-founder of Leonardo, Chris, and uh, we decided that um, founding a generative AI startup made a lot of sense. And so I brought together a number of people and, and we founded the company in October. I think we're already seeing a maturing of AI capability. Models are becoming much more able to not only do things in accurate ways and be more controllable, but also we are able to bring in far more understanding as to user intent and context. And really what that means is usefulness of AI is substantially increasing. And so it's sort of going from being an exploratory tool to being something that can be applied across the board. And I think what that means ultimately is that the the penetration across, if we look at Australia, is already significant and it's already transforming industry. I think we're going to see an increase in productivity, the capability of people to, to do more with the tools, and also this sort of view of AI, rather than being this um, mystical black box as being more of a sparring partner, more like a colleague who can assist you uh, with tasks that you have to get done. When we started Leonardo, we already felt that we were late to the party. I think that that inspired in us this ongoing sense of urgency and the pace of development in generative AI was dizzying then and it's only more dizzying now. Uh, we were all about and continue to be about um, the level of control that we're able to give users. And I think that that, that was really something people felt uh, affinity with. People like to feel augmented. Um, we, we sort of exposed a lot of control in the product and I think that that's been part of the key to our success. We've, we've got a great uh, group of people and a really friendly and supportive culture and I think that that enables us to, um, to be more ambitious in how we think about our goals because there's that level of trust and mutual support that creates sort of that, um, that, that basis for pushing things further and being more relentless in how we think about our goals. We actually had creativity through constraint because we were limited in, in headcount, we were limited in you know, fi financially speaking. And I think that that, uh, that forced us to be creative in how we approached problems, creative in how we uh, how we thought about building product, not only how we built, but what we built, be probably more scrappy, to move faster, to be more exploratory, to fail quickly, um, and take those learnings and, and apply them to the next thing.
I think there were a few moments when we felt that Leonardo had, had built a lot of traction in the market. And they, they sort of ranged from sort of early points where even when we first opened the, the doors to, um, to signups to registrations, that we were flooded with them. So there's already that early sort of hype before we'd even released the product. And then we started to see um, our community groups sort of growing. I think we hit a million um, members on Discord very early on. Uh, when we actually also monetized the platform, the reason that we did it, we actually did it a couple of months earlier is because we had users asking us to actually allow them to pay us money to use the product. And so, uh, we, you know, we felt that was a really, uh, you know, fortunate position to be in. And after we, we monetized, we saw extremely rapid revenue growth of, of like uh, after that point. I think as well, um, when we managed to, to raise our seed round, and then that, that followed up very soon after with, um, with a bridging round and then a Series A. I think those were all really great proof points that not only had we been successful to date in market, but also we had validation from investors that we were on the right path. There are lots of advantages to building a company in Australia. We have an incredible depth of talent here. There are really great educational institutions. The people coming out of universities here are incredibly talented and we we saw that early on as, as we built out uh, Leonardo we were able to find some some really really great people to join the company we also uh, actually have some really great government support I think in the form of the R&D concessions which uh, have been extremely useful in terms of allowing us to do more um, especially that, at that early stage. Both Canva and Leonardo have a shared vision and mission. With Leonardo, that's been articulated as democratizing creativity. And for Canva, that is empowering the world to design. And I think that that view is really quite inspiring. We have this opportunity with, with AI especially to help make that even more of a reality than it already is.